Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on creating a scalable and decentralized API management architecture with WSO2 API Manager. I'm Pubudu Gunatilika, I'm a technical lead at WSO2. Today, uh, Dinusha Disanayak is joining with me. He's a senior software engineer at WSO2, uh, but somehow he's not able to do the demo, but I'll be conducting the demo as well. So uh, let's start. Okay, so today's uh, agenda is on this webinar is we'll be discussing on the tech, uh, typical API management story. Then we'll be discussing on the decentralized API management architecture. Then based on the architecture, we'll be building a solution. So we will be having a CICD flow, which works end to end. And we'll be discussing on the API operator for Kubernetes. And we'll be discussing on deployment modes for APIs, and we'll have a live demo, and uh, we'll end the today's webinar with the Q and A session. Okay, so if you look at the typical API management story, so uh, I think most of you are familiar with these um, uh, API manager profiles. So. Basically, we have API Manager Publisher, Dev Portal, Key Manager, Gateway, Traffic Manager. So if you take any API management solution, you can see these different different components. So the API providers who comes to the who logs into the API Publisher has it has the capability to create and publish APIs. Once the APIs are published, then uh, it will be available in the API developer portal so that the consumers or the external app developers can come and discover the APIs. Then they can subscribe and generate an access token or the, we have the key manager, which basically does two things like generating access token and validating access token. And we have the traffic manager, which, the, which does the rate limiting or the traffic management for the gateway uh, request. And finally, API consumers can uh, invoke APIs via the API gateway. So this is the typical API management story or the centralized API management story, which you are used to have. So uh, if you take a production setup, you basically have a load balancer front uh, between the gateway so if your tps is higher you have to increase the number of gateway nodes so the idea here is that in each of the gateway if you if you have deployed 100 apis then all these 100 apis will be in any of these gateway so it doesn't matter where the request comes in so uh, first request can go to the first gateway second can go to the second gateway likewise it will do the round robin level load balancing. So then you can serve this. So this typical centralized API management solution is not like what we call as like modern businesses are consumer driven. So when the modern businesses are consumer driven, traditional centralized API management enterprise architecture no longer uh, exists. Like it doesn't provide the capability to satisfy the need of the business or consumer. So the, if you take the consumer today, based on the social uh, impact or social media effect, they are more well aware on the, what's really happening around the world and they have different, different ex expectation. So with these expectations are changing and based on the consumers having different different ideas coming like you cannot use the centralized api management architecture to cater these requirements so if you take a monolithic application you used to have so the you have different different functions such as products functions order function inventory functions payment functions so this is a typical uh, monolithic application where the client application is connected to and this is also connecting to a database so so if we break this monolithic application into different different services as an api 
like product service, order service, or inventory and payment service, you have the ability to deploy these, test these, and deliver these or run these services in a different way. Like you don't need to depend on order service to just to deliver the product service. So uh, you have the flexibility to deliver those revisions of the product API product service in different approach. So all these services can be front with the micro gateway, which adds an API layer. So what I'm discussing here is the moving from monolithic architecture to the microservices architecture. So if you take the microservices architecture, there are key aspects in microservices architecture. You have the testing and deployment and running individual components separately. So you don't need to worry on other components in the system. You have the agility and flexibility and it will speed up to go to market. So adapt microservice development for fast innovation and also agile software development lifecycle for smaller teams. So the idea here is that although you were having a 20 team, 20 member team for developing a monolithic application, now you can break these 20 people into different different teams and manage their own autonomy so that they can deliver differently. And they have the freedom to use heterogeneous technologies and early feedback cycles are, uh, can be there. And also the decentralized governance is all there. So although the components are decentralized, still it has some governance. So moving from what we're discussing on the microservices are to centralized architecture. Now, if you consider centralized gateway, you will be having hundreds of gate APIs, but these APIs are not similar to one another. So if you take SMS API, it has different capabilities. It has different requirements and also sim similar like payments gate, it has their own concerns. So if, if you check what are the concerns are there, maybe you have different resource usages. So SMS uh, API does not require much resources, but payment API requires a lot of resources and different security enforcement. Maybe you want to apply high security schemas for payment API and some APIs need dynamic routing because their backend keep changing. And also some may need API mediation and transformation just to do some transformation and also API shaping. So API shaping in the sense, so uh, when a client is a desktop user or a mobile user, in order to have a low bandwidth for the mobile users, you have to send the response payload in a minimum manner. But for the desktop, user you can send the complete payload so this api shaping has to dump done at the gateway level so so that's a that is also a concern we have to address and we have the response caching so the caching can be differently set so those are the another requirement and we have the we may be a requirement to like have a private and public apis and also there can be cases like you want to have an API gateway per department. So maybe your uh, marketing department is a different gateway and your uh, engineering department is different gateway so that we have a clear separation how the request flow goes. Okay, so when addressing, this is where we are moving to the decentralized API management architecture. So what we normally do here is that we decouple these APIs into a different, different gateways. So in previous case, we had one gateway in all the APIs are there. Now what we are going to do is we decouple these APIs and deploy these differently. So store API will be deployed in a different gateway, payment API in a different gateway, or maybe you can group one or two APIs or maybe more than that 
and deploy in a API gateway. So this is somewhat to similar to a central gateway. So this is where we we are bringing up the API micro gateway. So you cannot do the same thing with the centralized or the centralized gateway for this purpose. You need to have a more cloud native aspect in this case. So that's why we are having API micro gateway. So API micro gateway is a lightweight version of the API gateway, specially designed for the microservices architecture. It is de designed to scale. Startup time is uh, one second, up, like it's uh, one second, and it has self validating token and uh, localized rate limiting, offline analytics, and it has the immutability and stateless features as well. So it also support for lifecycle management across environments, and it has a low resource uh, uh, requirements. Like if you take the Docker base image, it is around 40 MB, and it can run uh, with one core CPU and 250 MB of memory. So this is really important when we are moving from centralized gateway to decentralized architecture, where your gateway has to be adhere to like this set of uh, characteristics because to cater the most decentralized requirements. So if you look at this, uh, uh, this is a basically a deployment diagram or the architecture diagram, the specifically designed for the uh, decentralized API management. So uh, as we are targeting API micro gateway specifically for the container based environment. So uh, this architecture you can uh, use as a reference architecture for the container orchestration platform such as Kubernetes. So it is where we have the ingress gateway. And uh, so ingress gateway could be an Nginx or ALB in AWS. Likewise, you can have you can use any English gateway here. So this architecture, we have three planes. One is data plane, control plane, and management plane. So the data plane, we have the ingress gateway along with the other API micro gateways. You can also deploy any of the backend services as a service in Kubernetes as uh, in the data plane. So uh, similar to what we had in centralized architecture, will be having a traffic manager and key manager in this case as well. It's in the control plane. And also in the management plane, we have API publisher, developer portal, and analytics components for the management layer. So uh, the key idea here is that the request routing happens, how the request routing happens. So the ingress gateway is well aware, what are the gateways aware, available and how the request should route. So uh, in the latest uh, slides, I will be explaining how this uh, traffic routes. Okay, let's uh, move on to the uh, next slide. Uh, so why we need a decentralized API management architecture. So if you take the modern application development practice, it mandates more decentralized approaches. So if you take any uh, ongoing uh, effort, most are going with Kubernetes or cloud native technology based uh, deployment because uh, it has a future and uh, all the uh, deployments are running on containers. So the trend is going in that direction due to the uh, vast of uh, advantages that can gain from these uh, patterns. So it improves the productivity and agility by giving teams more autonomy to self-serve. So the microservice philosophy also favors decentralization in all aspects of software design. At a high level, it is about giving the business greater agility when bringing new ideas to the market. So um, this will let users to come, like, come with different, different solutions and be innovative and add value to the effort that the solution they are building. So uh, let's move on to the 
building a solution on decentralized architecture. So I'll be developing a CI/CD flow end to end where you can uh, deploy and create an app API in publisher and then deploy in Kubernetes environment. Okay, so this solution uh, has three stages. The stage is API design phase. So the API creator is involved in this um, phase. So the, I have two main uh, like the roles in here, API creator and the API product manager. So uh, once the API creator creates an API in the design phase, the product manager will approve that and publish the API. So uh, we discuss, we will discuss in details in the next slides. So then we have the API deployment phase. It is fully automated with Jenkins and uh, we have used Kubernetes with the API operator as well. So I'll explain these uh, uh, things in the next slide. So let's, if we move on to the design phase, what really happens here is that API creator logs into the publisher and create an API. So it so he has the ability to design and the API based on the requirements. So then what he does is he can use a API CTL tool. It's a command line tool, which is designed to interact with the API manager. So you can use that tool to export the API from the API publisher. Also, you can use the download option in the publisher so that you can download the Saga definition as well. And once you downloaded that, you can commit that API artifacts to a personal GitHub repository. So uh, here I have used personal GitHub repository in the sense like uh, you will first uh, push your artifacts to a personal GitHub repository, then make a PR for the product manager's approval. Okay, so um, so in this uh, GitHub structure, we have like a branch structure. So uh, in this case, uh, we have different different branches called food APIs, SMS API, location API. So in food APIs branch, we have three APIs. API uh, like food delivery API, pizza API, restaurant API. So, so this each of the branches correspond to a one micro gateway. So if you take micro gateway one, it has these three APIs. But if you take the micro gateway two, it has only a SMS API only. In three, it has only location API. So likewise, you can come up with different branches and then add the APIs. So this is the structure which I have chosen, but you can come up with your own structures. I think that based on the nature of this, better solution is using a branch for one micro gateway. It is more convenient for uh, deploying. Okay, now, up to now what we have done so far is we have created an api then uh, uh, commit those artifacts to the github repository and make a pull request so now what really happens is the api product manager review and merge the pull request so once he reviews and merge the pull request the github repository is configured with the webhook so the webhook is triggered and it will triggers the Jenkins pipeline. So once the Jenkins pipeline is triggered, it will deploy the APIs. So we'll discuss in details. So another um, task of the product manager in the API approval phase is to log into the API publisher and publish the API. Once he publishes the API, then only the API is visible in the store. So that the others can come to the store and discover that API. So uh, before we move to the deployment phase, let me explain about the API operator for Kubernetes. So uh, this is specifically designed for uh, Kubernetes in using the custom uh, resource definitions or the custom extensions which we have, which is uh, part of the Kubernetes. 
So let's assume you have several microservices that are deployed in Kubernetes, product microservice inventory review. So then now you want to expose these microservices as an API or a managed API. Then what you need to do is you have to create a Sagar definition, then give that Sagar definition to the Kubernetes platform. Then it will deploy a micro gateway for your microservices. So simply that with a, by giving only a Sagar definition, you can deploy a micro gateway. So it will enforce security, rate limiting, mediation, monitoring, etc. So um, this makes the APIs a first class citizen in Kubernetes ecosystem. It is easy to deploy. So as I mentioned earlier, it enforces security, throttling, mediation, and monitoring. So this has different different deployment patterns. So I'll be explaining those in next slide. So this has fully automated experience for cloud native API management. So the Sagar definition becomes the single sort of truth. So what really happens is when you add an API with the Sagar definition, we have developed the API operator. So the API operator is the heart of this uh, uh, Sagar definition uh, handling part. So it does two things. So uh, API operator, it will run a Kanika job that will build a micro gateway Docker image. So the micro gateway has a Docker image so that we can use to run that micro gateway in Kubernetes. So the first thing it will do is it will run a Kanika job. Kanika is a Google tool which is designed to build Docker images based on the artifact it gets. So um, first thing it will create a Docker image and push to a Docker registry. So once it is completed, it will create a deployment service and a hot, uh, HPA, the horizontal pod auto scaling policy uh, and deploy these in Kubernetes. So then once you deploy these artifacts, it will, you can see a micro gateway up and running for this particular API. So that's the basic um, thing how you expose uh, your microservices as an API by giving a just a Sagar definition. So you don't need to worry on uh, scaling, auto healing, like all these are handled by the platform itself. So uh, it is easy to deploy in this manner. Okay, now let's move on to the deployment phase. So once as you can remember, like uh, in the second phase, we merged the pull request. So once we merge the pull request, as we have configured a webhook, it will trigger a Jenkins job. So Jenkins job does two things. So the first thing is it will create a tag and push the JIT. So uh, this tagging is considered as a revision management mechanism. And second thing, it will use API CTL command line tool to deploy an API in Kubernetes. Uh, like so, what I explain in here, it will start to happen when you deploy an API in Kubernetes. So once you deploy an API, it will deploy a micro gateway in Kubernetes. In addition to that, we have configured ingress resource uh, creation as well. So it will add a ingress resource so that it can route from uh, traffic from ingress gateway to respective API micro gateway. So, uh, so if I explain this like uh, API consumers are talking to the ingress gateway. So ingress gateway then direct these uh, traffic to base on the different API micro gateway. So I have extracted a sample definition from the ingress resource. So in here, if you can see it, like if the request comes to review v10, then it goes to review API. So this is the service name of the review micro gateway. And if the request comes to inventory path, then it will go to inventory micro micro gateway so the likewise these mappings are created in the ingress 
ingress gateway then when the request come based on these routing rules it will route to respective micro gateway okay so uh, this is the complete CI/CD flow which i explain in three stages first stage is to create an api in the publisher then use the api ctl tool tool or download the saga definition and and uh, definition and commit to github so it will commit to a G personal github repository and then you create a pull request for approval once the product manager approve the pull request uh, he will also do the login to the api publisher and publish the api and then uh, as it will trigger a jenkins job it will do a release there it will actually create a tag and then um, it will use api ctl to add to update an api so if the api is not exist in the uh, kubernetes system it will add an api if the api is already they are in the Kubernetes system, it will update an API. So uh, we'll be doing a demo so you can get some idea how the update happens. So finally, it will deploy micro gateway in Kubernetes along with other artifacts such as HPA, horizontal port auto scaling policy and an ingress. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on to the deployment modes for APIs. So these are the types how you can deploy apis in a micro gateway so the first one is private jet mode so uh, the idea here is that your micro gateway runs in a one port and your microservice container or the backend service run a different port so the uh, key thing here is that you can scale these ports separately so the when the traffic is high you can scale micro gateway container separately and also you can scale microservice container separately so then we have the sidecar mode so what really happens here is uh, you have a one port with two containers one container is a micro gateway container the other container is the microservice container so uh, if you have a requirement to scale the microservice container or the backend and with the micro gateway then you can use sidecar mode so when you scale uh, when you when the auto scaling or the scaling happens you are scaling both the containers which is uh, actually you ask when you scale the port it scale these two containers inside so uh, the third and the last option is the shared mode so uh, in previous cases you can you can see we have deployed one api in a one uh, micro gateway container without having that you can deploy multiple apis in a one micro gateway container so the traffic can like come to all these uh, all these uh, traffic can related to all these apis can come to this particular micro gateway so uh, using shared mode you can have a centralized uh, gateway concept in here as well so uh, that's about it so i think we can move to the demo so uh, yeah let's uh, move on to the demo okay so uh, so this is the demo repository so api operator demo is the uh, github repository we are using for keeping the demo artifacts so uh, you can go through this so we have uh, used the master branch to share the all the backend service artifacts jenkins resources api manager deployment artifacts likewise so uh, in this github repository we have similar branches so if i move on to this branch we have the online store api it has these two apis deployed so i have already deployed these apis in uh, uh, kubernetes and i have this products api 
if you check this products API, I do not have a, any API in here. So you can see only a Jenkins file is here. So uh, we are using multi-branch approach in Jenkins. So uh, if you want to create an API, you can create a branch in JIT and then have this Jenkins file. Then once you commit these uh, artifacts or the API artifacts, it will trigger a Jenkins job. So uh, in this demo, what I'm going to do is uh, three things like create a products API and uh, invoke it and update the product API. Uh, so the scenario is like how to update a already exist API or maybe adding an a, adding a resource to a particular API and update it. And the third scenario is we are going to scale, auto scale our API micro gateway based on the CPU load. So those are the three scenarios I'm going to do. So um, before that, uh, let me check whether uh, these are the You can see ports are running. So I have inventory endpoints. So this is for the inventory API and NS provisioner is that is for the API manager. And we have this online store API running. And I have this review endpoint backend as well. So if I list down available APIs, I have only one API at the moment. So uh, before I deploy the API or create an API, I'm, I'm going to deploy the backend service. So whoever familiar with Kubernetes, they know like uh, to deploy an application, you have to come up with the deployment and a service for that application. But we have introduced a custom resource called target endpoint. So just to deploy, backend services for the APIs. So in API operator, we have four custom resources, API, target endpoint, rate limiting, and security. So here, what I am showing is the target endpoint. So if you have a microservice um, that uh, Docker image, you can specify that Docker image, you can give the port, and then uh, we, once you deploy this in Kubernetes, it will deploy a pod of this particular Docker image. So let me deploy that. So we can use gtl apply minus f. Okay, so if I list down the ports, you can see uh, this product endpoint is created. Okay, now let's look at uh, how we can create the uh, API. So the first task is of the API creator is to create an API. So I'm going to create an API called products API. Then I'll use a product as the version, as the context and V10 as the version. So the endpoint is, uh, this is somewhat uh, different like so what we are going to do is we are going to expose the what the backend service which we deployed product endpoint as an API so in order to route traffic I'm going to list down the services so products endpoint is my service so I'll be specifying that particular endpoint as my uh, backend endpoint. So uh, this is running in port 80. So you don't we don't need to specify a port here. I'll be selecting unlimited. Then I'll be creating an API. So in addition to that, I'll be adding the resources. So these are resources are auto generated resources, but I'll be adding a one resource called products. Okay, then I'm going to save the API. Then uh, we have now created the API. So users have the ability to download using this uh, download definition. Uh, 
using the definition but i'll be using the api ctl tool to download the like uh, export that particular api so uh, just to do that uh, i need to so i have the api ctl command line tool installed so uh, first now my api manager is running in kubernetes so i need to connect to that so to do that I need to add an environment called Kubernetes where I have these endpoints defined. So now I have added my uh, environment. Now let's look at how we can export. So um, I'm going to export the API. This is the products API which I created. This is the version. This is the environment. And then let's export that. API. Okay, now the API is being created. So I exported to my this location. So before that, I need to now I'm going to commit this uh, API to my Jenkins repository. So here I'll be using I'll be committing to Dinosha's uh, repository. So I'll be committing to this uh, products API repository, then create a pull request so that I can uh, merge it in uh, my repository. So we have configured webhook in this particular GitHub uh, repository. So that's why I'm committing here and making a pull request. Okay, so um, now, uh, I'm in this uh, repository, the Unshas repository. If I check uh, JIT uh, branch, I'm in products API. So now I'm going to unzip exported API into this location. So earlier we had only Jenkins file here in this branch. Now I have this products API. So if I use JIT status, I have this uncommitted uh, this uh, products API. So I'm going to add this uh, products API. Then I'm going to commit adding product API. Okay, now uh, I'm going to push this to uh, origin products API GitHub branch so we have already uh, exported and committed these artifacts now we are going to push this to uh, products api branch so uh, if i go to the initials one products api it shows me to create a pull request so i'll do the pull request okay so now I'm in the API operator demo branch demo repository of mine. So now I have the ability to merge this, review this API and finally merge this. So uh, once I merge this uh, API, it will trigger Jenkins pipeline. So uh, products API is pinned there. So what really happens is that it will start trigger a Jenkins pipeline because we have configured a webhook for that API uh, operator demo GitHub repository. Once, as soon as we merge the PR, it triggers a Jenkins pipeline. So it trigger and uh, it has completed this task. So what basically it does is, uh, so uh, it will create the tag, then it will add an api so the api is not available in kubernetes so it will add an api so you can see adding api to the kubernetes so what we can see is now ports are there so if we list down this uh, with the watch command you can see the products kanika job is running now it has started to run so the idea here is again like if i go back to my 
previous uh, slides so uh, here's what really happens so we deployed the api so the api operator will first run the conical job it builds the micro gateway docker image and pushes to the docker registry once it is completed then only it will create the deployment service and hpa artifacts and deploy in kubernetes then only you can see a micro gateway running for your uh, api so um, now we need to do one additional thing so the product manager is uh, already merged the pr now he needs to publish the api then only it is available in store so now uh, if you look at the apis it's there so the any consumers can come and discover this api so um, in order to invoke the api we need to have an access token so i'm going to create an application and then uh, subscribe all these apis and then only i can uh, uh, access these apis so i'll be creating jwt app uh, chain and uh, any set to unlimited and create the apis and i'm going to go subscribe apis so i'm going to subscribe to all these uh, apis so that i can invoke these apis so i'll be subscribing these yeah now i have already subscribed so let me take a jwt so let me generate an access token so i'll be getting a jwt access token here okay i copied that so as we have done the process like now you can see uh, products api micro gateway has been up and running now it's in the running state and it's already available now we can access this uh, api so um, if you look at the ingress uh, it has created an ingress resort resort uh, resource called products api for which has that particular mapping so uh, let me copy paste the token i think i will have to get a new token okay it's there let me paste the token now invoking the api so let me explain uh, so uh, in the ingress you know like we have to have this uh, host mapping called mgwingress.ws.com this is the ingress endpoint and this is the product v1 context we created and this is the resource we created and we are giving the access token okay now we are able to access the resource now let me try to access another resource called 101 so i know we didn't add this resource but it should fail so it says no matching resource found so uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to update my api again so i'm going to the publisher and then i'm going to add this resource uh, another resource called products uh, product id which gives the product related information yeah i'm going to save it okay now uh, we can go to this uh, life cycle tab and then uh, redeploy so that it will be available in the store as well so similar to what we did previously we have to export the api again and deploy it so uh, i'll be using this command to export the api so i'll be exporting the api again so we have to go this path again and again like when we are as we are going to update it 
the API. So uh, what I'm showing is how to update an already running API uh, in Kubernetes environment. So I'm going to unzip this. So I'll override these artifacts. So these are the uncommitted changes. So let me commit. Saying uh, updating API. Updating product API. I'm going to push to the same branch. Okay, now similar to we can create a uh, pull request from the Inertia's repository. So we can create a pull request here for the update in the API. Yeah, so uh, once we update, we'll be merging the pull request. So once we merge the pull request, it will trigger another Jenkins job just to update this particular flow. So uh, start creating the pipeline, run, running the pipeline. So similar to what we had earlier, like it will create a tag and then if the api is already there it will update the so it says api exists in the system hence update in the api so in api ctl we have add api and we also we have update api so uh, if we look at what really happens in the background so if you list down the pods you can see another kanika job has started so what really happens is, so we have now updated the Saga definition. So using that Saga definition, Kanika job is triggered and it will build another Docker image based on the Saga definition, the updated one. So once that Saga definition is already there, like image is there, Kubernetes or the API operator will do a rolling update. What really happens is here, it will spin the second container or the updated uh, micro gateway and then let it be ready. Then only once it is ready, it will terminate the previous uh, products API port. So we can see that in how it is been doing that in a uh, few minutes like how the rolling happens is happen happen at the Kubernetes level. So the idea here is that you do not lose any request that is coming to your API gateway because the rolling update is designed in a sense like it does not lose any traffic because at a given time at least one pod is uh, running. So you will not lose any uh, request. So now the Kanika job is created. So the, this the Kanika job has completed. So uh, in few seconds, it will uh, start the new Docker image, new uh, container or the pod for the updated uh, Saga definition. So before that, uh, so we can also check how the ingresses are being created. So if we list down the ingress definition. So the idea here is that uh, if some request comes to products v10, it should route to products API. Then only likewise, you have these uh, different different API based ingress resources, which basically does the traffic routing. Okay. Now you can see that uh, this uh, this new pod is coming up. It's been running, but it is not ready yet. So in this stage, it start it has started uh, accepting requests. So uh, you can see this uh, pod is similar to what you see here. 
but once this is ready the new container new pod is ready the previous pod will terminate so at a given time at least one is running so that uh, you don't lose any traffic okay now uh, now previous uh, curl command so the, it was not successful as the resource is not there so we can check how the resource is been there yes so the we can uh, see the we can get the product level uh, information from here okay so that's the scenario two we add an api we updated the api now i'm going to scale auto scale uh, my micro gateways based on the load so let me explain the hpa so hpa is the horizontal port auto scaling policy so when you add an api we api operator create a policy uh, automatically so this is the policy for product api it says uh, cpu percentage is 9 out of 15 so uh, threshold is 15 if the uh, this level goes above 15 it will uh, auto scale the pods it will uh, it will scale up to maximum of five five pods so uh, will be uh, we can uh, watch this uh, how the because uh, resources are being changing so uh, in here i'll list down the pods uh, uh, getting updated so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to send a uh, use the using the jmeter i'm going to send a load uh, like a load do a load test for this particular api okay so now i copied the access token yeah so here is my uh, jmeter uh, so i have 100 users with the ramp up of uh, 10 seconds so i'm giving the access token here so the access token is here now my request is like i'm hitting the products api so let me hit that uh, api yeah it's requests are going now so uh, we can see how this uh, hpa values are changing so it will take few uh, seconds to like update these values okay now still the ports are not there so even for the back end also the target endpoints which we have defined it also have the uh, hpa is already created so the backend also can scale up as well so um, this you can see the hpa goes to 76 out of 15 so that uh, it should scale because it has uh, overcome this 15 threshold so due to that you can see that uh, products api now have it has created four replicas so similar to that so our api uh, product api gateway has uh, scaled up and also you can see that uh, product endpoint also scale up because it has also scale like uh, go beyond the required specified uh, hpa values so you can see all these having load auto scale because it has uh, go beyond the uh, values we have defined so likewise you can scale up the micro gateway or you can scale up the uh, backend service using the api operator so what we showed is uh, how the ci cd flow can be used to deploy a micro gateway in a decentralized manner also we can check how the uh, api analytics looks like so i think i have to stop this jmeter yeah so we can see analytics here so it has run this much of 
traffic. So the likewise, you can use analytics to get some business information. So, uh, so this uh, process you can develop in any of the platform like uh, such as Kubernetes, OpenShift, or similar platform. Then deploy for production. So I think uh, we have come to the end of the demo. Uh, I think we can move to Q and A session. Yeah, let me take the questions. Um, yeah, so the one question is what are the deployment models? I think I covered these like uh, we have a, a private chat mode, uh, chat mode and site camo. So these are how you can group APIs in micro gateway and deploy in Kubernetes or any other environment. So uh, so that's how you can deploy it. And how do you manage different environments? Do you need to have multiple instances of these reference architecture per environment? Yes, so uh, this architecture you have to have a per environment because uh, you cannot use the same publisher in dev or QA. It has to be different publisher for dev environment, different publisher for QA environments, so likewise, we have to have environment per like this. So what I explain here is um, we have a distributed architecture like publisher, store, key manager, traffic manager. But based on your TPS values, you can go to two nodes like where you have two API manager running, which has all these components together. So you don't need to have a distributed setup, but you can run just two API manager nodes. For this uh, publisher and store, but API gateways have to run with micro gateways. So the second question is, um, can you have multi element that are names uh, environment that are namespace? Yes, uh, it can also done. Like uh, I think uh, if you take production systems or the environment low environments, most of the users having uh, uh, like environment that is differentiated from the namespace. So you can use that approach as well. Okay, so the next question is, I have questions in regarding the service name. This service name is the namespace of the port where the point gateway is running. So products endpoint, what I define when creating the API is just uh, uh, assuming that my API and the my micro gateway is running at the same namespace. But your if the uh, microservice is running in a different namespace, you can define your endpoint as products endpoint dot the namespace name. So the traffic routing happens in Kubernetes. So you don't need to worry about. So just defining the relevant name, then you can do it. So the next question is, uh, can you show the second deployment mode again? Yeah, sure. So the second deployment mode is the sidecar mode. So uh, let me explain this uh, in short. Like uh, in Kubernetes, you have the pod concept. Pod is a collection. It could be a one container or collection of containers. So that's why we call a pod. So in this port you can run two my two containers one container is your micro gateway container second one is your microservice container so when you scale in kubernetes the port is scaling as the port is scaling the the containers that are within the port is also scaling that's how you scale this okay so the next question is um, does the architecture native support state-based backend workloads? So if you could use topic, please. If you could. Natively support state-based backends. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like uh, I think uh, if you are looking at the event base, I think uh, micro gate is still not support, but it's uh, it support uh, gRPC kind of. Uh, Protocol. So the next uh, webinars will be covering those. So you can check on that. 
So, uh, so I have another question regarding the connection between the English gate and will it be SSL or if the SSL, how to manage certificate lifecycle? So, um, so um, between the micro gateway and the English gateway, you can have can use SSL uh, connection as well. So unlike in Istio, the certificates are not rolling update or it's not rotating periodically. So uh, maybe once you have a certificate in uh, set up a certificate, it can run for five years or likewise five level. So you don't need to worry on that. So it could between the English gateway and micro gateway, you can use SSL or maybe plain text as well. So, so the next question is uh, regarding SSL connection between the API gateway and the backend. If the backend is SSL secured uh, in the case, if micro gateway port restart, where we will store the certificate. So uh, certificate is, uh, so this certificate is added to the micro gateway. So what we are building here is a micro gateway Docker image. So this Docker image has all these uh, artifacts to certificate, uh, endpoint details. So all these are burned to this Docker image. So as you see that when you update the, so you have the option to update the Docker image, then you can reflect the new changes. So the likewise, so the idea here is that this is immutable. Okay, the next question is about uh, collect personal data like uh, WSO API manager collect personal data like username, date of birth, type address, privacy policy. How are these countries is secured? Uh, so, uh, so these are uh, stored in uh, database. I think, yeah, most of these are stored in database. So. Uh, other than that, uh, so we have we are compliance with GDPR, so you don't need to worry whether this particular user is uh, uh, going from the system, then you, it will automatically delete those resources as well. Okay, so the next question will uh, will W should work with um, Azure CI CD. So uh, I don't think there is uh, anything like we haven't test Azure CI CD, but uh, it should work like theoretically it should work because these are like some connecting dots. So um, it should uh, work as well. So the let me take the last question. Uh, so I read on slide on private chat and public APIs. Can you please explain how private, how to make private or public APIs? So, yeah, so the you can deploy gateways in private and public. Like, so uh, from gateway side, it's like having having a private gateways which can access only for the internal traffic, and you have set of public gateways which can come from the external. So that's the separation in public, private, in gateways, and also you can have a separation in the store side as well so the public apis are visible to the public users or the users that are coming from outside and private apis are only accessible or visible in store that are looking with the maybe organization itself so likewise you can have this public private apis as well so that's about the questions i think uh, we can uh, conclude this webinar so you can find these uh, demo artifacts in Pupudu my repo api operator demo so i think we'll be emailing these uh, slides for the uh, participants as well and you can download and try out api manage you can also join to the slack channel apm slash slack dot com. you can join and ask questions there as well so you can create any issues uh, related to the product in this as well. So um, we'll have a couple of follow-up webinars here. On April 30th, we have the gRPC support with the micro gateway. And May 5th, we are having the deploying 
graph ql services as managed apis and may 12 we have the overview of api micro gateway 3.1 okay then thank you very much for joining stay safe